Hello, uh, my name is Juan Martinez and I'm a lead data scientist at Jones No Labs. Currently, I am the lead of finance and legal NLP libraries. And today we are going to highlight the benefits of using legal NLP to understand contracts. We will review some concepts in the beginning and then switch to a hands-on where we will go over some legal NLP notebooks in Google Colab. Let's start. We can define legal contract understanding as the task in charge of analyzing legal contracts or agreements using specifically AI techniques, mainly natural language processing. This includes first identifying the contract type or the type of the, of the agreement. For example, is it a credit agreement? Is it an uh, asset purchase agreement? Is it a non-disclosure agreement, etc.? What kind of, of, of uh, contract or document is it about? But it is also about identifying the different clauses in the agreement. For example, given a type of agreement X, an NDA clause, for example, do I have a termination clause? Is there any information about dispute resolutions? Do I have an applicable law clause? And all of these clauses that I have detected, where they are in the document. To do that, we will use legal NLP annotators to carry out what we call text classification. That is the NLP task in charge of classifying an input. In our, in our case, we will be talking about uh, identifying a class from a text. So our input is basically a text, is the, the document text. We have two classification tasks. One is document classification, and the other one is clause classification. Document classification retrieves one class, the document type in, in our case, from the document. So given your document, we can identify if it's either a credit agreement, an NDA, or, or a work agreement. Um, in the second case, in the case of the clause classification, what we will be retrieving is one class per section of the document. For example, if we have an NDA, which are the sections that that uh, NDA contains, and yeah, and we, can uh, easily identify which are the types of the of, of the section. So this is the termination, this is the introduction, this is the preamble, etc. Legal contract understanding also includes carrying out information extraction and entity level. For example, who are the parties of this agreement? How many parties are there? What countries or US states are involved? What is the specific uh, effective date of the agreement and which is the termination date? What is the purpose of the agreement and the specific law or means to be applied in case of dispute resolutions, etc. So this will be defined by the business decisions that you want to automate. If you want to identify some specific information because you take decisions based on that, you just use NER to detect that information. This is highly customizable and we have many hundreds of models to do that. So please reach out to us in case you have some inquiry. The NLP task in charge of extracting relevant entities, as, as we are describing right now, is called name entity recognition. We carry out a close specific entity recognitions, which means that we look for specific chunks of information, specific pieces of information in specific clauses, not in the whole document. And we do that to improve the performance and reduce processing time. So that is very quick. First, we identify the different sections, and then if I know that some section is a some point in the document, I already know what kind of entities I can extract for, from there. In this example, uh, you can see some of the entities that we extract for the first clause that we call the introductory clause or the names of the parties clause, which are the parties, the effective date, the roles of the parties in the agreement, the type of the document, the different roles, etc. Then we have relation extraction. Uh, relation extraction includes understanding which are the relations between the different entities that we have already extracted. For example, what are the roles of the parties in the agreement? More specifically, given two parties in a credit agreement, who is the lender and who is the borrower? Given two people signing an agreement in behalf of their respective companies, which person represents which company? To link entities together, we will use legal relation extraction, also included in legal NLP. In this example, we see how we can assign the borrower role detected in the agreement to its party, called Inc. Same for the agent role. 
And this is not only about roles. You can map the companies signing an agreement. You can map the people men mentioned to their companies. You can map the dates based on the on the agreement, uh, when an agreement was signed, when an agreement enters into into um, uh, into effect, etc. You can even go beyond extracting chunks and relations. You can just write your own questions in natural language and get answers. For example, what is the purpose of the agreement? This is what we call question answering. We use large language models. Uh, in the case that we are going to showcase today is Flantify based models to process any question in natural language and provide answers. In the example that you see on the slide, you can see the answers to questions as between whom the agreement was made, when did it enter into effect? Um, yeah, and asking questions about, for example, about the party, which is the address of the parties, which is this party uh, based on or headquartered in, etc. But you can do much more than that with legal NLP. For example, you can get reduced versions of long legal documents or agreements with a state of the art legal summarization. As with question answering, we provide uh, LLM models to achieve that state of the art accuracy um, that matches today's standards. All right, um, this has been just the introduction and some clarifications of the concepts that we are going to go over uh, in the notebooks. Here you have two links. The first one is the link which highlights the main features of the library and allow you to get a license and install legal NLP in environments as AWS, Azure, Databricks, or even on your own premises without any internet connection. The second link is the link that we are going to use right now, and it points to the place where we have more than 40 legal NLP notebooks. We will take a look at two of them, the, one, the, the specific ones about legal contract understanding, but you can find much more than that uh, in that uh, repo. Okay, so let's get started. I will switch now to the notebooks. All right. Okay, so um, this is the GitHub repo. In John's Node Labs Spark NLP workshop, you have not only the legal NLP notebooks, but you have here many other notebooks for all the libraries of the Spark NLP suite. We are going to click in here, legal NLP. And as I was saying before, you have here about 40 different notebooks that you can check. You can go for the very first one. To the last one, that is how they are meant to be um, checked um, sequentially. But uh, for today's uh, webinar, we are going to check the specific notebooks for legal content understanding. We have the first one that covers almost everything that I have discussed today. That is generic. I think is is um, uh, it runs on top of credit agreements. But also, you have very uh, once. A specific one or more specific one that is about legal contract understanding with non-disclosure agreements. Let's go first to this uh, first one. It's number 80, that is legal contract understanding. Uh, you need to click on the opening call up so that you get the full um, version and visualization. Okay, and here you are. So you can already run it from here if you have a legal NLP license. Let's run some rows so that you see how, how it starts. It's very well described and, and illustrated. Uh, what we are going to use is our um, single sign-on connection to our license repo. Uh, first of all, let's install the Jones Labs library and then we, we use this automatic installation. That is as easy as running this command, NLP install, for the browser through. This means that please use single sign-on. That's it, OK? So that you don't need to, to upload any license. So it automatically retrieves the license from our license server. You just click on this. You install the library. Then I will click on this. We will have a pop-up. Uh, but so that we don't wait because it may take some some time uh, until uh, everything gets installed. I will be already going. Ah, okay, here you are. Okay, here is the pop-up. As you can see, authorize Jones No Labs NLP. 
this basically for reading your license. Okay, it checks that you have a, a running uh, legal NLP license. You authorize that, authorization successful. And then when you come here, everything will be downloaded, deployed, installed, and ready, and, and made ready to, to use. There is another way of downloading, that is this manual downloading, but uh, since I have already done this, you don't need to do that. Okay. All right, uh, then we start on a Spark session. So uh, legal NLP runs on top of Spark, which means it's cluster ready, uh, which means you need a Spark session running, okay? Um, the very first part is just um, downloading a create agreement. I got just one from this uh, public repo. And this is just for loading and uh, checking what kind of, of, um, of data we have in that in that um, file, in that textual, textual document. While this gets run, let's go to the very first part that is document classification. If you remember, uh, the very first thing that I started with today was about um, understanding what kind of documents we are working with. So the very first part is document classification. And then what, uh, given that I already know what kind of document it is, uh, thanks to document classification, I will already try to process and check what kind of clauses I also have in that in that agreement that will be clause classification. Okay, so it's uh, already running. As you see, this is the uh, document that I downloaded that is an amendment to a restated credit agreement, more specifically, okay? Our library is agreement agnostic, so it does not really matter um, what kind of, um, of agreement it is. So um, yeah, uh, in this part, I just use the text to create a data frame, a table, because this is what Spark works with. I'm just showing here the results. As you see, this is like uh, the table with the first column, that is the text, that's it. I have already my document ready, the borrower, the bank, etc. Let's run document classification. Document classification runs, so everything that you want to do in Spark NLP or in legal NLP, more specifically, requires a pipeline. A pipeline is a series of components which, which carry out some specific task. The task is document classification, so we will have a Spark NLP or a legal NLP uh, document classification pipeline. That is, the first one is document assembler. This is uh, just as easy as uh, telling Spark that, okay, this is the document, uh, or this is the column uh, with the text of the document that we are going to process. So it's basically creating a column with the text. In this case, it's one agreement. You can have many agreements and run them parallelly. Uh, this is just one, one of them. The second one is BERT, Sentence Embeddings. So this document uh, classifier will use Sentence BERT. Okay, we have different architectures, different deep learning architectures. Uh, architectures. In this case, is Sentence BERT. Okay, the next thing, is, that's it, is the classifier itself. So basically what it does is it get the text that we have already downloaded. It, calculate, it calculates the embeddings. The embeddings is the numerical representation of a text. So you just get uh, something that you can then uh, mathematically uh, operate and manipulate. Okay, you, we don't work in, in state of the art NLP. We don't work with, with, with text or words anymore. We work uh, on a, a numeric um, uh, basis. So we calculate this embedding, this embedding is contextual. So I get all of this mathematical representation, numerical representation of the text. And then I send that, those numbers, those embeddings to the uh, classifier. In this case, uh, what I am using is a classifier which identifies if this is a credit agreement or not. So if it's a credit agreement, it uh, returns credit agreement. If it is not, it returns false. Okay, so it's like a binary classifier, yes or no. We have uh, about 800 different classifiers so that you understand what kind of, of agreement uh, it is. They are very quick and you can put as many as, as you want. If you know that you are process, processing specific group of, um, 
or you are expecting a specific uh, group of uh, documents, you put all of those classifiers. If you want, you can even 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 put all of the 800. It will be very quick to to process. Okay, and you will get like a signal, a, a true or the name of the agreement. If the classifier has detected that yes, that agreement is is, is a credit agreement or is an NDA or or an or an asset agreement. In this case, what he's saying is yes, it, it is a credit agreement. It, it definitely is. The next part, I mean, the, the next um, task that we are going to carry out is close classification. Close classification is basically understanding what kind of parts the agreement um, has. We have a lot of common clauses because the clauses are also very document specific, but mm, many of them share clauses between, between each other. Um, we have also, again, uh, several hundred of classifiers. For example, we can detect indemnification clauses, insolvency, whereas introductory clauses, names of the parties, intellectual property insurance. So please feel free to check um, our, uh, if you go to nlp.johnsnolabs.com in models, uh, you can go to uh, legal NLP. And here are the almost 1,000 models that we have. Uh, yeah, you can even select the classification that is text classification in here, and you will see all of the models uh, that we have, including, uh, for example, let's go for the clauses. For example, yeah, let's let's use the search because there are many clauses, for example. Then in here, legal warranties, uh, notice clauses, dispute, legal exceptions, etc. So um, we have. Yes, as I was saying, about 500 models only of that. Um, sorry. Okay. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, in order to understand where are the different parts of the agreement or the different clauses of the agreement, we need first to take a decision that is, how are we going to check those? How are we going to um, divide the document so that I send those pieces of text to a classifier? What we are doing in legal NLP, there are two approaches we follow. The first one is uh, splitting by paragraphs. We understand uh, that something is a paragraph when there are at least two new lines. Let's go back to the document. For example, all of these, this is two lines. This is two, li two new lines, sorry, okay, two new lines. So we can consider that all of these chunks of, inform of information, they are all paragraphs, okay? Be careful because sometimes you have like a page of the number and it breaks, but it does not really affect much or it should not affect much, okay? So this may be considered as a separate paragraph to this one, but that would be okay because we will be sending both and in both cases it will be saying that is the one specific clause, okay? So yeah, this is the first thing that we do. We split by all of these uh, paragraphs and we try to identify, identify what kind of, um, of clause it is. Okay, so uh, these are the paragraphs um, by using that splitting. As you can see, some of them are very small and probably uh, there is no a specific clause that we can assign to that, but all of the uh, others, for example, are quite, a lo uh, quite long and they have enough information so that a model can uh, properly understand. For example, that is an amendment clause, these are counterparts, Etc. These are what expenses, etc. Okay, what we are going to work since we have 500 plus um, clauses, we are going to uh, try to identify the only the, the the first class, which is in almost any contract. That is the introduction clause. We call it introduction, introductory, or names of the parties. So we call it differently, and basically that is this um, this clause, I mean, it's a clause when we talk about the parties, the roles of the parties, the type of the agreement, so basic information about the parties. This is what we call uh, the introduction clause. Um, okay, so what we do is um, we will create another pipeline, but now instead of sending the whole document, we will be sending the paragraphs, okay? We'll send in these sections and we will be asking, 
okay, is this section introduction, uh, this introductory clause, yes or no? Again, it's binary classification, yes or no, yes or no. So we will be looking for that. Usually we can even, we could even stop at the first one, but sometimes the model retrieves information about the parties in different parts of the document. So as you see, there are several um, parts or several sections which the model thinks has, inf ha uh, has information about the parties. The main one, let's check because the main one, um, yeah, is this second one because it already describes the parties. So this is because Culp in a North Carolina corporation, now Wachovia Bank, etc. So this is a very good one to understand what is the contract about and we will be processing it. But there are others like, for example, this one is also retrieved by the model because it uh, talks about what kind of agreement. So it's kind of also an introductory. But you will find others like, for example, in here, when we talk about the companies and we also see the role, for example, okay, here's the borrower who is called in and this is the person. This is also some information about the parties and it's also extracted. That's why you will see not only uh, this uh, initial section, but also by the end, you will see also some, some sections trigger as important or relevant uh, uh, because of uh, they have um, information about the parties. But let's focus on the this ma uh, main one that we extracted, okay, this, this second one, that is this 12th amendment to amendment and restricted credit agreement, etc. Um, okay, let's focus on this. Now that we have already identified the clause, that we have here some introductory clause or some names of the parties, what we are going to do is name entity recognition. That is basically entity, entity extraction, NEA. NER retrieves pieces of information which are relevant for us. Okay, evidently, what is the most relevant in this part is, well, we have the document type, but we already know that is a credit agreement. Um, but for example, the effective date is, is important, the names of the parties, uh, maybe the states, the addresses, they may be relevant in case that you want to understand if this company is headquartered in a country you don't you don't work with or there are some like legal restrictions. But also it's very important to understand uh, which are the roles of these parties. Because, okay, we have Calpin and Wachovia Bank, but who is lending money to whom, right? Okay, in this case, is it may be evident because one of them is a bank and the other it is not, but it may not be the case. So understanding, for example, that we, one is, an, is the agent and another one is the borrower may be also very important. For this, we have another pipeline, which is a name re entity recognition pipeline. We have the very same document assembler, which means, okay, create, a, me, uh, create for me a document with this text, with this create agreement. The next one is, um, okay, um, divide the text into sentences, so split into sentences. Why? Because NER in most of the cases, name entity recognition, in most of the cases, works at sentence level. It's not like the classification that I have been describing before where you send like the whole text. In NER, usually you don't need to send the whole text because in order to anywhere, for NER to work well, we usually just need the, a sentence. So what we are going to do with this pipeline is, I'm going to send you this section, the section that we have uh, identified this clause that we have identified as introductory, I'm going to split it by uh, sentences, okay? Because the, the 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 section is pretty long, so it's better always to have a kind of a split to have a smaller length. And then I'm going to use again embeddings. Embeddings is uh, to uh, to remind you is this numerical representation of the text. And we are going to get the sentences transformed into numbers. And then those numbers are going to be processed by a deep learning model and NER model, which will retrieve the entities for you. So this is what this pipeline is all about. Let's see it in action. Here is the results. We are using a visualization library that is part also uh, of uh, the Spark NLP suite, which is NER visualizer. This is the clause that I was describing. Okay, here you have 
uh, some of the entities included in this NER model that I have used. This one specific NER model that is in the in our repo. You can even look for it in here. Here you are with all the information. It's a start, uh, meaning that is a, a good model uh, tested and checked with good accuracy. We are going to use this. Um, and in here, in the documentation, you will see that uh, these are the predicted entities that you will get. You will get the parties, the effective dates, document, uh, the document types, etc. Format names if they are, etc. Let's go back and see what we have extracted. Uh, extracted, yes. Um, here you are. For example, the doc, doc, doc is the document, the document type. Um, if you re uh, remember before, we already had like classified the document by type. So it was a credit agreement. We already knew this, but now NER has detected like a more fine grain definition of the document. It's not only a credit agreement, it's an amended and restated credit agreement. Okay. So in here we have more refined uh, information. We detected the effective date. As you see, the date is quite long, and but it, it can successfully detect um, it with the full length, right? The day, the, the, the year, the, the month, everything. Then the parties. This is one of the parties, COP, and this is Wachovia Bank, the other parties. And it also detects what we call alias, uh, that is basically ways of naming things in an agreement after the definition of the parties is done. For example, what, what I mean by, by, by this is, um, we say Wachovia Bank National Associ Association is one of the parties of the agreement, but the agreement will not mention Wachovia Bank like, like this. Um, they will use the kind of ally, alias. It will be uh, mentioned as borrower, maybe Wachovia Bank is the former name that they had, or agent or bank. So that's how we will find Wachovia uh, later on in the document. We will uh, not see uh, again what Chovia Bank as it is. So it's important that we extract this to understand later mentions to what Chovia will be agent bank or borrower for cult. Okay, this is pretty accurate and it extracts everything that we wanted to, to have at this point. If there is something that you see missing, for example, um, in here, we are missing the former name. In here, we are missing the location or what type of amendment it is, whatever. We also have what we call zero shot NER. Zero shot NER means you don't even need to have a model trained by us, by, by a legal NLP team. You can just use questions to retrieve that information that you are looking for. For example, I don't have here former name, location, and amendment, or what time of amendment it is. For example, this is, a, this is just a test. You can use this zero shot NER model that is the same pipeline as NER model, but instead of setting that I want this NER model to run, you are not setting that you want um, any specific model. You are setting this zero shot. And we, and we say that this is zero shot uh, because you don't, uh, it's the first time that the model will see this text and it has not been trained on that, uh, on, that, on, on that information. So it does not have any previous experience. So it's zero shot, it's completely new from scratch. How does it extract then using some tips? Those tips are the uh, questions that you are going to give. In this case, Former name, the company was formerly uh, known as, location, from which state is the company, amendment, whatever amendment it is, etc. Okay, so it's also an ER name, but the recognition are a little bit different. And these are the results. Uh, you do some spark here, Magic, you get the instructions, and then when you say, okay, this is an amendment, I restart the credit agreement, but also this is retrieved as amendment, that is this entity that we set here, but also it retrieves that is 12 amendment as well. Okay, so we already have that this is the 12, uh, that there have been already 12 uh, uh, amendments to this. But it also detects um, North Carolina's allocation, and we also detect that there is a former name that is Wachovia Bank. Okay, here you have it. Okay, so these are the entities that we have extracted with zero shot, 
which we did not extract with any R because the model was not trained to extract those. But in here, you have them. So basically, you can put these together. And you have a lot of entities already extracted to understand your, your agreement. Now, the next important stage is, OK, I have them. Uh, I have extracted them separately. But who is who in this agreement, right? Because here I have a bank, borrower, but I don't know who is who, right? So all of these people, or for example, this alias, uh, this, this former name belongs to whom, OK? So I'm going to link the entities together. How I do that? I do that with relation extraction. This is another um, pipeline, which is more complex because you do everything that you do for an ER. OK, so this is the very, uh, the very same thing, the very same pipeline that we have been using for an ER for extracting the entities in here. So this is this, is this basically. OK, but now what we are going to do is add some more components to that pipeline to understand the dependencies. OK, so basically we do a dependency parsing and use relation extraction. This uses also BERT by specific BERT, which is called span BERT, to understand if uh, two entities are not only uh, syntactically or, or linguistically uh, connected in the, in the sentence, but their meaning, if it makes sense that these two entities uh, are uh, referring to the very same concept. OK, so it is um, semantically based. We have one uh, relation extraction model, which is uh, called contract uh, dog parties that is basically done for extracting the entities, for, sorry, for extracting the relations to these entities, to the entities in the introductory clause. Let's see uh, in action, I will go to the, yeah, here you are, to the uh, visualization also using our library. Okay, what I have extracted uh, from here is that OK, uh, CURP is the borrower. OK, I also see that the formerly Wachovia Bank, the formerly is the formerly name of Wachovia. Good. And I also see that Wachovia Bank is the agent, but it's also mentioned as the bank as well. With that, we already know is who is the borrower and who is the agent, who is the bank. So that if I see that later on in the document, the agreement, if I see that something is carried out by the borrower, I know that it talks about Gulp. If something is uh, carried out by the agent, I know it talks about Wachovia. This is just a small demo of things that you can do with just one clause. Just imagine the rest of the clauses. And if you are interested in um, visualizing everything or put together in some graph knowledge base or in some knowledge uh, database, this is one example of the representation of that clause using, using a graph. OK, here you have the document. Here we have the party. So this is one of the parties. And you see signed. So these two parties have signed the agreement. And also, I know that Wachovia is um, the bank and is also the agent. And I see that Corp is the borrower. And I also know that it was signed this effective date. And I also know that there is a former name of Wachovia, which was Wachovia Bank. OK, now we are going to go very quickly uh, to the other uh, notebook that I prepared for you, which showcases uh, more or less the same. Uh, let me go back to, okay, to the Spark NLP repo. Yes. Okay. Um, and now I'm going to go to Legal NLP. And although we don't have much time, I just wanted to show you the second one that is more specifically about NDAs. Okay. This is exactly the very same um, kind of notebook where you install the library and you just run. And it has the same um, sections, but I want to jump to summarization and question answering because it is something that we have not seen in the previous one. In, in case that you are interested, please run this notebook that is does more or less the same, but with non-disclosure agreement, if you see. So 
it says that it's now it's an NDA. Uh, take a look. Now we have uh, identified not only one section, but uh, up to 24 sections of the NDA. So names of the party, definition of confidential information, preamble, exceptions, the use of confidential information. So yeah, if you remember, we have up to 500 uh, sections uh, or clauses, uh, close classifiers. So some of them. Okay, here you are. And then what we do is NER, the very same thing that we have done, but uh, for all the different clauses, instead of with introductory, this is the introductory, but then also here you have definition of confidential information. You can extract confidential information types, forms, for example, oral or written form if you want to notify something, etc. So many NERs for many different clauses. Okay, but this is more or less the same. Uh, examples uh, that we have already seen, but for NDA. But what I wanted to um, uh, to do your your attention to is to question answering. If you remember, uh, I told you before in the in, during the concepts that there was a, two other tasks. One is question answering, which is using natural language processing, or better to say, questions in natural language in human language to ask about information or ask about answers in, in the document. For example, let's see some of them. I have an NDA. Just suppose that I have not done anything before. I'm just going to ask this. Between whom was this agree agreement made? What is the address of a company? Or when did the agreement enter into, into effect? OK, so uh, what we do is basically we create um, question answering pipeline that is putting together the questions with the context. The context is the document itself. So we put the document and these questions that we have set. And then we we'll run the model, that's it, a very small pipeline. And this is what we, we, we get. Between whom this agreement was made. This agreement was made between Plus Ultra, Delaware Corporation, and uh, John Snow Labs. Okay, when did the agreement enter into effect? The agreement entered into effect at the second day of January. What is the address of Plus Ultra? Plus Ultra is located at 111 May White, Austin. In which state is Plus Ultra? It's Delaware, et cetera. Whatever you want to ask, you get the answers. And last but not least, the last uh, task that may help you in legal contract understanding is summarization. Usually contracts have many pages. They can have up to 100 of pages. Sometimes they are not so long, but anyway, they may require a lot of uh, effort uh, to process is if what you just want to do is some quick check, for example, of something, right? So you want to check the names of the parties and what is it about? Let's suppose that you want to do that. You don't need to read the 40 pages, the 30 pages of the document. You can use summarization to reduce the length on the, of the document and have like a summary. How we do that? We, again, get this different sections so that the, sum the summary doesn't skip any section. And we, so it's basically we get the paragraphs. Here they, there are some of them, five of them. Then we call a, a, a summary pipeline that summarizes all of them. OK, this legal summarizer using Flanty 5 model. What we get is basically uh, a summary. So here is the full paragraphs, and here is the summary. And we, would, we do that for all the paragraphs. But that's not it. That's not only it. Um, because after this, what we get is not like a summary. What we get is this, a summary of each section. Uh, if you see, if you apply this, this is not very nice because it adds like this legal agreement states that so it tries to explain you each of the paragraphs in a, summar in a summarized way. And we don't want to do that. We want to have like a whole summary of the whole document. So what we do is we get the uh, summaries of each paragraph. And then with all the summaries of each paragraph, we run again the summary. But instead of sending the whole document, we send the summaries of each paragraph. So one section, one summary, and then all of those summaries of those sections we send again to the uh, summarizer. And this is what we get. 
this legal agreement is between Plusulta. So we have already the names of the parties, the purpose. It states that the parties may disclose. So it talks about a disclosure of uh, confidential information. So all the information that is relevant from the document, but instead of having 40 pages, it has seven. And that's it. So um, I don't know if you have any questions or um, yeah, if you want to to reach out to us, you have the links in the um, uh, in the presentation. If you want to reach out to us also via email, you can write uh, to support at johnsnowlabs.com or reach out to me via LinkedIn, for example. My name is Juan Martinez. And yeah, if you have any questions, I will be happy to to answer.